if someone else wants to start a farm like that, mm. how do they do it? How do you start with something like that? So, hello, we're here hello. with, with Penny McGride at the AVF Summit 2017 in Washington, D.C. Yeah. Hey, Penny, how are you? Hi, hey, Zija. You have started a farm, which yes. is pretty cool. I co-founded Vertical Harvest in Jackson Hole. It's a three-story hydroponic farm. Mm-hmm. Vertical farm. Vertical farm. Yeah, Truly a vertical, vertical farm. In there. <laughs> <laughs> so, if someone else wants to start a farm like that, mm-hmm. how do they do it? How do you start with something like that? Yeah, um, first thing that you need to do is understand your markets. Understand what people really want to buy and want to have you grow. And understand what your price points are. And then you need to make sure that you have some good technical advice, obviously. And um, greenhouses are all customized. As much as we all want it to be a greenhouse in a box that you can put someplace and roll everything out, it's not that simple, yeah. right? So you have to have a good grower on your side to give you good input and um, understand your site. And your location is really critical for so many reasons. Mm. Yep. Okay, what I also really like about the vertical harvest, vertical yes. farm, yeah. the one in Jackson Hall, is that you have this really social mm. impact. And this was just a discussion uh, about data and right. also, uh, data about sustainability. How do you uh, impact the communities? How do you add the social impact, mm-hmm. the social aspect to vertical farming and right. farming in general? Right. What's your opinion about this? You're, you're like a pro in that, you know, <laughs> in my opinion. <laughs> I think the social impact is really, I was talking yesterday on on a panel and um, about policy and I think that really social impact is a, a, from a policy standpoint, it's a value add Mm -hmm. to a community because it um, really can enhance enhance the value of a business to your community in ways that may not seem tangible. But really when it comes down to, to job creation, and um, longevity, and that adds value to your business, which really enhances your community in the long run. Mm. And the social impact is more, that's why it's much more than a feel-good notion, because um, it is actually something that you can measure in job retention, and and as well as um, creating new green-collar jobs for a, a whole sector of the population that perhaps didn't have the opportunity to work in this sector, I mean, in addition to just um, able-bodied people, right? You have yeah. you have added uh, a whole different uh, availability of the workforce. The dude, Jason, okay. he said technology is going to take over uh, jobs of people. Right. So he's a big fan of the universal basic in- income. And I guess I'm pretty sure that farms will head in the same direction, more automation, more food produced for less workers. So mm. I see worker work, you know, getting reduced because of vertical farms. Right. So how do you think, as a small business owner, can you kind of uh, pick up on that trend? And at the same time, instead of creating jobs or like creating just food for the community, it's it's a difficult question. Right. That how one, can right? we still advance technology and yeah. and, and, and keep food, local food production, to keep that human factor, right? And so, I mean, it was something that we struggled with at the beginning, but it really came down to a factor of cost for us because we could only afford so much automation. Yeah. And um, and and there's really, at a certain degree, nothing can, can, can replace the value that automation does serve. So I think as you, as you stay with the small to medium-sized scale farms, which really is going to be so much of the answer to food production. But you do know like projects like uh, there's like an open source uh, mini farm uh, for your backyard where you just have to do nothing. There's a robot going oh, over really? the of your crops, just seeding, watering, right. uh, monitoring. It's do it yourself, it's open source. Mm-hmm. So it's doable of price, but more and more this will be become automation is gonna be become low cost mm. in the end. So I, I see ourselves like being fed by robots in a, in a very near future. So making the making the the job creation that farming and urban farming will bring like irrelevant. 
So the social impact we want to have has to come from a different angle, no? Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> I see what you're saying. Am I over? Am I am I like dropping this? On no, you but but I, but I do think I do think that um, I don't. I tend to think that that we won't let that happen. We won't let it. We're gonna like do humans versus robots. robots <laughs> <or something. laughs> I mean, let's don't, face don't it. let that robot so take my you, job. <laughs> if you could compare uh, soil-based agriculture, and yes. The problem that agricultural production is facing right now is that we have monocrop, mono large-scale food production that involves humans on a very small scale. Yeah. But that's coming to a breaking point, I believe, because it's causing so many problems with people's health, the health of the soils, and and I'm, yeah. I don't see it going away tomorrow, but hopefully we'll be s with um, indoor agricultural and vertical farming, we'll be smarter. A large-scale permaculture farm is very difficult mm -hmm. because of the high need of human labor. Mm -hmm. But if you replace that human labor with a robot, you can have like fields of thousands of hectares of permaculture. Right. How cool would that be? That would be very cool. Mm. So now what I'm actually aiming at is like I'm, I'm from Ghent, from Belgium, mm -hmm. and we are known as throughout the world. I've seen a lot of my American friends post on my Facebook wall about the commons uh, that we again are like champions in commons creation, oh. urban common mm -hmm. creation, yeah. which basically means that um, instead of like a business run by a person or a couple of persons and, sharing. and then selling their products, right. no, the, the commons goes from another perspective. It says like, okay, let's all together build a company that we are the customers mm -hmm. of. So you kind of the consumers become the producers at the same time, which makes them co-own everything. I see like vertical farming heading in the same way. Mm -hmm. You build a vertical farm producing food, mm -hmm. and then everybody buying the food is actually owner of that right. same facility. Right. How cool! That's do, do you very think cool. that's like like? A, I think a, that's a possibility. So everybody <laughs> starting an urban and vertical farming project, think about you know using your customers as owning your business. I guess. Or letting your customers own your business. That's kind of... That's, that's, cool. that's radical. Right? That's radical. <laughs> All right, Penny, one last question. Okay. For people wanting to start or get involved in urban and vertical farming, mm -hmm. what would be your, your advice? How would you approach, like, some life advice? Some life advice? Wisdom. We need wisdom. We need more wisdom in this world. I mean, as, as much as you can, I would say visit some vertical farms yourself first. I know that sounds logical. Mm -hmm. But I can't believe how many people I talk to who want to break into this industry that I haven't spent some time at a farm. Yeah. And I realize if you if you view yourself as a high level person, maybe you don't think you need to do that. But everybody needs to understand that farming is farming, even if it's mechanized and even it, if it's um, if it's if you feel like it's highly automated, still you need to still grow crops. Right. Yeah. You so I would that. say spend some time at a farm. I like that. I think this is the best advice I've ever got. Oh. Thank you, Penny. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye, everybody. Yeah.